Uh, and the third Kepler's law that has a tremendous importance in astronomy, as you will see, but not in the form given by Kepler initially. See, the three Kepler's laws are phenomenological in nature. What I mean by that is that these three laws could be actually explained as the consequences of something more fundamental. Uh, they were established by just looking very carefully at the data on planetary orbits and finding the regularities, and Kepler was uh, able to extract uh, three laws of motion. But actually, they are consequences of something more fundamental. And it uh, was actually Isaac Newton who discovered the laws of motion and also the law of gravity. And when you combine the two, voila, the three Kepler's laws come out as a consequence. Okay? Nevertheless, it is this third Kepler's law, but as formulated by Newton, that is of extreme importance in astronomy. It basically enables us to determine the masses of different objects, to determine the mass of the Earth by taking the orbital data of the moon revolving around the Earth, to determine the mass of the sun by taking the orbital data of any planet revolving around the sun. It enables us to determine the masses of stars if they are gravitationally bound to each other, which often they are. Uh, over 50% of all stars are members of so-called binary systems. Okay. So that's the way how we find out how massive different objects are. We cannot go out there and put a scale, put the star on a scale or a planet. That is clearly out of the question. Nevertheless, we can determine using the laws of physics, in particular the third Kepler's law as formulated uh, by Newton, to actually do that. Okay, And that's tremendous predictive power of science. Okay, so what Kepler basically stated, uh, I've went ahead and uh, said more. We'll uh, say these things uh, today as we go along. Uh, the, uh, Kepler's third law says that uh, the planetary period, P, which is uh, the amount of time the planet takes to orbit the sun, and its orbital size measured by the length of the semi-major axis, A, are related such that if you take the semi-major axis and you cube it, that is, you multiply it with itself three times. A cube means A times A times A and divide by the period squared, by the square of the orbital period, you get the same number for all planets. And if you decide to measure the size of semi-major axes in astronomical units, and uh, the orbital period in Earth's years, 365 and one quarter days, this number happens to be equal to 1. Why? Because clearly for Earth, A is one astronomical unit and P is one year. 